Chris Garrett, DBT OMPT here with the Overall Athletic Institute, here to follow up with our video regarding cervical spine assessment impairment. Today we're going to show you three techniques, go over three techniques that we would use in the clinic to improve cervical spine rotation. Um, we're going to show you one in the upper cervical, the mid cervical, and the lower cervical. So the first technique we're going to go over is going to be focused on the upper cervical. So we're going to be in the same position that we did our assessment at. So just as a review, we watched him turn his head side to side. We watched what his nose was doing. And then from there, we did a passive motion test to clarify what we saw during the active motion test. We did, then did some joint play to feel where the restriction was, either at AA or OA. And then from there, we're going to do the technique. So um, we're going to stabilize with our with my left hand. Thumb's going to be on the lamina on the side we're going to treat. Um, index finger is going to be with a lumbrical grip on the lamina on the other side. We're not really we're stabilizing stabilizing as much as we can. But we're going to rotate into that restriction and then do a traction. My left hand is stabilizing and also creating a counter force caudally. My right hand is rotating them and then lifting up. We're going to hold each one three, three to five seconds. We're going to do it three times. So the next technique we're going to review is based in the mid cervical spine. So C2 down to C7. Um, in, the in the assessment video, we worked on our joint play working our way down. If we find a restriction on one side, so say I'm at C2 or on the right, and I feel like that dorsal caudal glide isn't quite there, I would then move into a side bending technique that in, incorporates traction and, and a side glide um, at that level. So we're gonna show you on the spine first, so you know where my hands are at. So just to review anatomy, with the joint plate testing and with the mobilization, we wanna make sure our hands are in the right position. So I'm gonna flip them over just so you can see. So with the joint plate testing, we're on the lamina, of each segment doing a dorsal caudal glide going this direction. I'm pushing with my finger pad or with this portion of my hand. So if I find the restriction, let's say at C2, for the technique I would drop in between C2 and C3, use Trouty's point or more of the fat pad on my hand to make it more comfortable, glide the two medially while doing a traction with my other hand. So there's a fulcrum of motion happening at my mobilizing hand, like so. So to improve, let's say, left rotation on the left, to improve the dorsal caudal glide on the left to improve left rotation for a pitcher, my hand, I find the joint play at C2, I fall in between C3, C2 and C3 in the inner space, supinate my hand, gentle contact with my ribs and my right hand, and I'm pushing across. This can be done in an oscillatory going from mid position to end range. So you can hold it at end range and do an oscillation or just a static mobe, you know, for five seconds, come out. And then we're always retesting, both passively and then actively. All right, so the next technique we're gonna do is in sitting. A lot, all these techniques that we're doing can be done in a variety of different positions. I'm just showing you different ways to do each one. So we're going to do a mobilization at C7 in sitting. We're going to do both a ventral cranial glide and a dorsal caudal glide, um, both ways to improve the rotation. So let's say, again, we have decreased rotation to the left. So we're going to work on the dorsal caudal motion on the right, ventral cranial on the left. So this is tricky. We need a high-low or they need a chair where you have enough space to put your leg up. We want to find the spinous process of C7. So a lot of times with my interns when we're working on this, we find that you know, with their hands, they're a little too lateral, too anterior, um, or they're on C6. So we find the first rib, and then we move over to C7. So we know we're on C7. I'm gonna pull ventral cranial with my left hand. I have my knee up on the chair or on the high-low to prevent the, the, the torso from rotating during the motion. And with this ventral cranial, just based on how I can get my hands, it's more of a, a ventral pull. With the dorsal caudal on the left side, 
it's going to be more of a dorsal push just um, based on how I can get my hands. So they're both going to be on the lamina with the hypothenar portion of my hand. And you can make sure you're on it. So as I rotate him, just to test, you can see him his head rotate a little bit and you know you're on it. And the key is to get right on top. So you're going to have him rotate down, lean down, just relax, get up on the get it right above him and it's going to be an equal and opposite pressure with my right and left hand. You're going to hold it 5 seconds. Come off. Hold it. Come off. Hold it. Come off. So you can do each of those individually in sitting. You can also do it in supine. So there's a lot of variety. But I think this is the most effective one. You see the quickest results. And then they're in sitting, you can have them rotate and you'll see the, you'll see the change right away. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, you can follow us at overathletics.com. If you like the video and the topic, please click the like button so we can make more videos on this topic. We are going to follow this one up with, with a muscle-related video and a self-stretching video, so stay tuned. Thank you.